All right, guys. First off, as always, good day. Glad you guys are here. So, <clears throat> today's lesson is going to be about the basically the first administration. Uh, now, the thing is, I'm sure you guys already know who the first president was, uh, so that's going to kind of help you out. But I'm going to give you a little bit more about the backstory, about what um, the first administration was, and things like that. Why it was so important, and why it's considered one of the greatest. Uh, cabinets of all time. So, before we get started with that though, here is your warm-up picture. So go ahead, look at it, analyze it. Um, look at the picture from side to side, you know, up and down. Um, and what do you see? Okay, first off. Now, if you have the notes, um, the packet, you already know what to write down. It's already right there for you. But if you don't and you've um, forgotten what the questions were, the first question is, what do you see? Okay, so break it down, all right? Um, second question is, now that you've broken it down and you, you wrote down what you see, what do you think is happening here? Okay, now this uh, particular picture is a very famous um, incident that happened in American history. Um, uh, a milk commercial reignited uh, people's um, interest in it, uh, believe it or not, back in the um, in the 90s, you know, it was a it was a pretty funny thing. So if you have a chance, um, you may want to ask your parents about that, like a famous fight between two guys, and there was a milk commercial about it. Uh, they might remember it, some some of them might not. Um, but if you have time, look on YouTube or go go on Google and type it in, and you'll see the commercial. It's pretty funny. So. Go ahead and analyze this picture, and then once you're finished, get ready for the uh, the notes. So, in the summer of 1789, Congress created three uh, departments for the executive branch and one office. These uh, branches, or sorry, these departments were Department of State, Department of War, um, Department of the Treasury, and the Attorney General. Okay. Now, Department of State, this guy's job is to make sure he knows what's going on around the country and basically tells the president what's up. The Department of War, pretty self-explanatory, um, and the Department of Treasury is the guy's in charge of the money. Now, Washington, the first president of the United States, had the pick of the litter, the best cabinet. First off, as... Uh, Secretary of State, he had Thomas Jefferson. Phenomenal choice. Um, the Secretary of War, he had Henry Knox. This guy was awesome. But his biggest, biggest, amazing choice he made was making Alexander Hamilton the Secretary of Treasury. Now, I've told you guys this time and time again in class, and I'll continue saying it. Alexander Hamilton, when it came to finances, was a financial genius. I mean, you it's hard to put into to play how smart he was. Um, if he was here nowadays, he would be, I can you not probably a stock market billionaire. He would easily be a billionaire. Okay. Um, because he knew how money worked. He know how, he knew a lot about finances and some of that. So it wouldn't be a far stretch to say that he would be a stock market millionaire, billionaire. People paying him basically what should i invest in you know and things like that you know because he was top guy all right now congress also made uh another appointment okay um suggested by the president and that was that john jay be the uh, uh part of the supreme court now the thing is john jay was an amazing lawyer and you know and he became the first supreme court justice uh Chief Justice, I should say, uh, it was like, people were like, yeah, duh, you know, he's he's a good guy. So the first cabinet and the first uh, Chief Justice was like a no-brainer and still is considered one of the best of all time. Now, in December 1791, the Bill of Rights had finally been ratified. It had been approved by the states. Okay, now the first eight amendments 
if you haven't noticed from our uh, scenario uh, lesson we did, if you missed it, you, you really should see me about getting that because it was an interesting assignment, but also for you to get your, um, so you can see firsthand our Bill of Rights. Okay, so if you didn't notice, the first eight are about individual rights. You personally, me, you know, and individuals. So it talked about like First Amendment, freedom of speech, um, freedom of press, uh, freedom of peaceful assembly, you know, you get to have weapons, soldiers can't stay in your home, uh, cops need a warrant to check your house, no cruel and unusual punishment, the government can't charge you for the same exact crime two times, you know, so it's about you, individually you. The ninth and 10th, however, I call them the TARP um, amendments. Now, the ninth amendment basically says that any rights not mentioned in the or listed in the Constitution, you know, it's just because it's not there doesn't mean you don't get it. You know, that there are other rights you can have. You know, just because we didn't think about it doesn't mean you don't have it. Okay. Um, and the Tenth Amendment basically says any power is not specified that goes to the federal government goes to the states. Okay. Now, this is significant because the thing is, every other amendment says specific things, speech, um, press, assembly, you keep your weapons, um, no search, um, no taking yourself without a search warrant. It was very specific. And then here's the ninth and 10th that are kind of vague. And it's just like, you know, there's no specifics to it. It's just, you know, Blah. in a sense, you know, it's, it's weird. Um, so with that comes your midpoint question. Now that midpoint question is this, why do you think the founding fathers, uh, left the ninth and 10th amendment very vague? Why didn't they, um, make it specific? Why didn't they say anything? Why do you think they left it, um, vague on purpose? You know, why do they leave it for like, uh, kind of be like, there'd be, um, some like loose interpretation, if you want to say that. Okay. So the writing prompts on the bottom. And if you don't remember, you get credit for writing complete sentences. If you don't, if you just put, he done said it, no, no, started off correctly. I believe the ninth and 10th amendment or loose interpretation because, and explain. Remember, this is an opinion piece, which basically means that you could only be wrong in three ways. One, you don't answer it. Two, you copy off someone. Or three, your answer is so left field, it makes no sense whatsoever. So if you put something down like Donald Duck told them to, no, no, sorry. You get no, you know, no credit for that. Or if you just put, I don't know. That that's not getting you anything. Okay. So think about it. Why would they put the first eight, uh, specific and the last two just vague, you know? So think about that. All right. Now here is where Alexander Hamilton shows off his genius. Okay. Cause getting the cabinet together and the government set up, was a first hurdle. Now, the biggest problem comes up, the national debt. Because remember, every state has their own debt. Okay, they have their own money. And the thing is, he's like, they're like, well, how do we get rid of this debt? And how do we bring up the, the country up? So Alexander Hamilton had this idea. And his plan was to plan pay off all the debts but he wanted the federal government to accept that debt and basically build up a line of credit. Okay. Now the thing was, imagine this, if the government's basically told you, Hey, we see you, you, um, you owe $2,500 on your credit card. We'll pay that for you, but we need a favor for you. Or we'll take that debt away from you, 
but we need a favor. How many of you guys would take that? How many of you guys would take it, but you want to hear what the favor is first? Okay, and that's what happens basically. Okay, uh, some states were like, yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Some were like, okay, we're cool with that, but we want to know what that favor is. What do you want? And the thing is, um, Hamilton basically says, my plan is to create a uh, national bank. Okay. Now, some people like uh, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, um, these were anti-federalists who felt that the government should not be all powerful. Okay. And on top of that, uh, if I remember right, some of them were from the state of Virginia. And in Virginia, they they paid off a lot of their debt. They didn't completely paid off. They, par they paid off a large par portion, but some other states hadn't. So they're like, well, wait, wait, wait. So the government's going to get powerful, and then you're going to help us out just like a little bit. But these other states who basically haven't paid a thing, you're going to help them out completely. This big old debt, ours, them, ours. You know, so they didn't really like the idea. And also they kind of said that, you know, the government's overstretching their uh, ability, you know. But the thing is, Alexander, Alexander Hamilton explained, under Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, it says the, that the government has the power to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper. And he's telling them, we need this. It is necessary to have a national bank, you know, and he explained the, the bank would basically be able to do this. First off, collect taxes. All right. Because the thing is, um, a bank, if you owe them, let's say your house, you take a mortgage, mortgage out and you, you, you put on you, or um, let's say you can't pay for it. The bank can take your home, All right? Any possessions and some of that worth value, they can take it. Okay, you need to pay off your debt, you know, whatever it may be. So that's what he's saying. You make, you do this, the government will finally have that teeth to actually implement tax collecting. And there you go. The other thing they can do is regulate trade. And remember, we've talked about this in class, but just in case you weren't there or you forgot, um, some places, if everyone was selling, let's say, uh, lumber, the price would drop really low, okay, because there's so much of it, and you can get anywhere, all right, so it's like, I'm not going to pay five bucks for if I can get over here for three bucks, then those people will try, oh, how about, how about three dollars, you know, and these other people are like, well, wait, they're trying to undercut us of uh, two dollars, you know, things like that, it helps the buyer, but it hurts the seller, and the seller states, and they're fighting against each other, see, so, and also on the flip side, if no one's making anything, but one person decides, I'm going to make, uh, I don't know, necklaces, just saying, then the price of it would jump up because nobody is making it. But also because the price is so high, you know, the some people might not be able to buy it, you know, so there's no point in making all kinds of, you know, necklaces if no one's buying them. So you have to have some competition so you can bring it down. And people have options and things like that. Okay. And the other thing is that the government could do now with the federal or with the bank was to basically pay for an army, you know, build ships and things like that, you know, provide for our defense of our country. Okay. All right. So the bank idea passed that the thing is there were some Southern congressmen who basically want a little something. They're like, we'll vote for it, you know, but um, we want a little something, you know. And the thing is, they wanted the capital to be moved from Philadelphia down to um, the South area. And uh, Virginia and Maryland said, hey, we got some land. You know, we don't mind donating. And George Washington actually had some uh, uh, land already picked out where he would like it, you know. And it was called Foggy Bottom. And... That's where our national capital, our nation's capital is today. You know, it was called originally because the thing is he actually made the plan for the city. You know, he surveyed the land and he did the whole thing with the roads. Um, 
So it became known as Washington Town, but we call it now Washington DC, which comes from the District of Columbia. Okay. So that's what the DC stands for if you didn't know. Okay. So that was it. The big idea passed. Now the thing is this will play a role later on in politics, which we may not talk about um, because we gotta move on in this class, okay? But it does play a role. The the National Bank, um, if you're interested in it, you should really look into it and some of that. It's, you know, it's pretty interesting. Now, Washington's administration almost went spotless, right? Almost. But the thing is, there was this whiskey tax that was brought up. Um, basically, uh, a large tax was placed on whiskey, and it really hurt these frontier farmers, you know? Because uh, the thing is, they're like, what's up with this? All of a sudden, this tax on whiskey? What is this crap? And they were getting mad, and these people were like, well, it's just like how it was with England. They're trying to tax us like crazy. They were trying to do this and this to us. They're trying to, you know, take out our money and this and that. But Washington was like, no, it's totally different. When we were under England rule, we had nobody speaking for us in England. Here, you have a representative. If they didn't like it, they could have voted against it, but they didn't. So, hush, you know, majority rules. So, now, these people started attacking tax collectors. They started robbing mail. Now, I'm sure right now to you, like, rob mail, whoop, whoop. They take those, you know, stuff we get in the mail, the junk mail, whoop, whoop. But see, back then, mail was everything. That's how they got news of the world, got news from people, family, things like that. Um, they were connected to the world with that. So basically, in a kind of trying to bring it to your level, it would be like if somebody basically took away your whole social media. Any way for you to communicate through games, um, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, you know, all any type of way you can think of to, to communicate through FaceTime or anything is shut off. Imagine how your life would be. Okay, just imagine that. Sit down for like a minute, pause the video, and think about that. If every single way you could talk to somebody was cut off, how would you feel? Okay, so. Hopefully you took some time to think about that. Um, the other thing they did was they actually destroyed the stills. And that's the, um, the stuff that would make like the whiskey and moonshine and stuff like that. These people actually destroyed those things of the people who actually paid the taxes. These are people just like them. But the difference is the ones who are angry didn't pay the tax. The people who, you know, who got their stuff busted were the people who actually paid the tax. You know, so Washington was like, you know what? We can't let this go. We can't. Because if these guys get mad over a tax, which is legitimate tax and not like a sudden out of the blue attack uh, tax. And yet they're going to be attacking our people. Then next month, when we add another tax, that's going to let these other people be like, well, let's roll up. You know, we don't like it. So we're going to take arms. So think or Washington was like no mm -mm. so he sent 13,000 troops uh, to the Pennsylvania farm area and just basically they backed down and that was the end of the whiskey rebellion the president showed some off and squashed this little rebellion because he knew he couldn't let it go starts off small but it could grow the best way to deal with those problems, deal with it head on right away. Now, with this, the forming of political parties had begun. Okay. Even from the beginning of our country, they had started. The Federalists and Anti Federalists, people who believed the government should be strong and powerful, and the people who felt it shouldn't be. Okay. They became more and more separated. Now, the thing is, the uh, Anti-Federalist, they changed their name to the Democratic Republicans, okay? And later on, they would change their names again to the Republicans. So here is your 
question at the very end. Why do you think the southern states wanted the capital to be moved from Philadelphia to the District of Columbia? All right, justify your answer. Why do you think they, of all the things they could ask for, of all the things they could want, even for their own state, they didn't want anything except for the capital to be moved uh, more south. Why? And if you look at a map of uh, Philadelphia to Washington, D.C., it's not that much. You know, so why do you think they would do that? Okay, so again, if you need help writing a sentence to start it off, there's one at the bottom right there. Um, if you feel you're competent enough to start your own, go for it. You know, how you want to start in your own way, go for it. Again, you're going to be giving credit with full, complete sentences and not just starting off with because, no, or two-word answer, no, okay? So that's it for this video. Um, so let me check something really quick so you might see a little thing. Yep, just had to double check uh, the, the slides to see if uh, that's, this was the end and it is the end. So make sure your name's on the paper. And when you go to class, be sure you turn it into the basket. All right. Um, but other than that, I hope you learned something. And I hope you guys have a good day. All right. Take care and be safe.